Hello! Today we are going to review how to gather information about current suppliers and their interactions with Coupa. So we start with our Coupa screen where we select suppliers and then here is a list of all of the suppliers that have ever been in Coupa or are currently in Coupa. You can see here under the status where there's active and inactive suppliers. So how do I tell how much a supplier does in Coupa? How do I see supplier information? All of that is actually in the supplier details. So we're going to go over a couple of different um, suppliers today so I can show you guys the differences and how things show up. But once I select on the supplier information, you can see I'm given several pieces. The biggest thing to remember here is that this information is company-wide. There is no way to make changes to this system, this supplier, without affecting everyone in the company that uses this supplier. So that's really important to keep in mind, specifically when you are requesting changes or suppliers are having issues getting POs. Um, we need to work together with the properties that are using the suppliers to make sure that we are all on the same page before we request information changes from e-procurement. So as we go into this, you can see there are a lot of different sections and I'm going to go over each section individually and then I'll show you a couple of different suppliers and kind of how they change based on the supplier settings. So in this detail, you can see the main details include the supplier's name, their DBA sometimes, whether they're active, inactive, and if they have a primary contact. A lot of times, you can also see some information here in terms of um, DBAs, whether they are always having their checks printed at property, etc. PO transmission basically just tells us when a purchase order is issued by Coupa, how does the purchase order get to them? You can see the PO method is email. This can be prompt, meaning the any PO issued will go into a queue and the buyers have to check the pending manual queue and manually send the POs. It can be um, email, CXML, or empty. It can be none. So if it's none, it will still go into the pending manual queue because the system will not have a record of it being sent. So that queue is really important for buyers to check regularly and ensure that all the POs that end up there are actually sent to the supplier. So you can see we have the ability to hold POs for buyer review. This basically means Coupa will create the PO temporarily, but it requires a buyer approval to actually become an accessible purchase order by end users, by AP, or even by the suppliers through the CSP, which is the Coupa Supplier Portal. You can check to see the PO email if one exists. Um, and then content groups, this is where you find out if and who can see this supplier. So you can see right now all content groups can see this supplier. You'll see um, content groups are primarily property-based. Um, and that's how we control what properties can see what. Additional settings basically tell us the payment terms we have notated and then how the invoicing is matched. So three-way match basically means the purchase order, the receipt, and the invoice have to have a, an exact match for Coupa to pay it. Um, there's also a two-way match, meaning the PO and the invoice have to match and then Coupa will pay it. So those are the two settings here and kind of what's going on in that section. The supplier accessible invoicing channels I think is super cool because it does give us some information about the supplier itself and how engaged they are with Coupa. Not only with us, but also other Coupa customers. So in this particular section, Penn National is you, or you is Penn National, meaning this is a summary of all the transactions um, in the system that have been through some sort of vendor automated method for this supplier for Penn National. In this case, you can see the answer to that is zero. The community here actually is 
any of their actions with other Coupa customers. So you can see if they're not using Coupa for us, are they using Coupa for someone else? So to show you a little bit about what that looks like in various states, we can actually go to Konica Minolta and you can see this looks a little different. The community, they're actually active on all levels of electronic invoicing. So they are CXML integrated, they are SFTP integrated with a customer or multiple. They use the, port the portal manually with multiple customers or one customer. They use supplier actionable notifications and they use uh, an, the invoice inbox method. With us, they use none of them. So that is what you can tell. So when you're dealing with a supplier specifically later, when you're trying to onboard supplier CE invoicing, this is a really good area to check to see if they're maybe already integrated within the Coupa environment. You could be asking yourself, well, how does Coupa know? Well, Coupa knows because of the, um, the email addresses that are integrated here, they exist somewhere else in the portal. So that is how, um, that's how Coupa kind of knows. So that is what that looks like here. We can go to Maximum Business and we can see that they are integrated with multiple different methods throughout the community, but they are integrated with Pen through the CXML and through the portal. And then as you can tell, if you can see how many, um, if you can see that they're engaged with Pen, it also gives you the number of invoices that are processed in individual methods. Keep in mind, this does not include invoices that are internally processed by someone within the pen organization. So, to find out if the supplier is really using Coupa effectively, we would have to find out how many invoices to date they have total and then see how many fall into these categories. But that's kind of what that looks like. TRS, you can see, they only use the portal for anybody. That's the only way they integrate. And then you can tell from this cus this uh, vendor, Mal Gaming, they integrate with no one. So this is a really good area to go and do some research in terms of um, if they're integrated already, who do you talk to? You can find someone within the company like, hey, I noticed you already used the portal. Do you know? Can we find out who that is? And maybe you guys can start using it for us. So that's a good area to go. We're going to go back to our original supplier. And you can see from, uh, there's some additional information down here. Invoicing configuration gives us some information if they're configured electronically through like a CXML integration platform or an EDI. Invoicing inbox, um, this gives us just some additional information about our internal settings if we use the inbox. And then the portal section tells us the status of this supplier with the CSP. So you can see from this, this supplier has been invited. Invited means we sent them the invitation and they have taken no action. You'll also see things here like with Mao, she is linked to the portal even though she doesn't use it. You can see with TRS, they are linked to the portal. Maximum Business, linked to the portal. So you can tell linked basically means they're using the portal, they've signed up, so we sent them an invitation and they did something with it. Linked is basically a way of saying, okay, they're at least engaging a little bit, where supply is invited, and then there is the not invited status, so meaning we've never invited anybody from that company to um, engage with us. As we continue down, you'll see supplier contacts. Here is where we can actually store supplier contacts. This is not necessarily to uh, send the portal to or email POs to, but this is just a way for us to it, keep um, a record of supplier contacts in terms of who the rep is, who the accounts payable person is, who the AR person is. Um, and then supplier addresses, the same thing, supplier sites, and then if there are any contracts linked to the supplier, they are listed down here. So one thing to note, any changes to this entire section must be done by e-procurement. So if you do have a change to this section, all of those must be sent to e-procurement. But I'll reiterate, 
if I am using AAA supply and all my POs are going to Jason and Jason leaves and there's another person or another property using this supplier as well, which I can always look up in the invoices tab and find out which properties are using the supplier, I cannot unilaterally decide where the new PO email goes. I must communicate with the other buyers at the other properties that are using the supplier and make sure that the person who's going to receive these PO emails is going to do so on behalf of all of the properties that are using the supplier. Okay, so those are some basics of how to research um, existing supplier information and this should be a really good start for you for future invites, change of contact information and updates and so forth. So I hope this has helped.